Hello and welcome to Hadfield Education's Good to Great webinar series where I interview the head teachers uh, within the UK education sector and today I'm joined by Jonathan Cuff who is the head teacher of Doverbrook School in Oxford. Uh, hello Jonathan, how are you? Yeah fine thanks Lee, thanks for having me. No problem, no problem, thank you for being here. Um, so Jonathan, um, tell me, how did you get into teaching? Oh, uh, it was kind of always destined to be really. My, um, my father was head of, a, of an independent prep school and so I grew up living, living on site and uh, had all the kind of wonders of the games fields and everything like that at my disposal. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was there from seven to 18 and it was kind of all I was ever gonna do, I think. So yeah, I was, I was destined for it really. And what was your path um, into teaching? Um, I finished school and then I did a, I did a gap year um, working working at a school, kind of doing all the dog's body jobs and lugging the pee equipment around and things like that. Um, and from there, I went to, to Brunel, to the old Borough Road Teacher Training College and did, and did four years there and then straight into school. So I haven't, you know, some, some head teachers in, in this day and age have gone through various kind of disguises of different work, but I was, I was, I was always going to do education and, and really followed the, the old traditional path straight into it. So being a, an NQT, as it's now deemed, um, what, what, were your, what were your initial learns um, within your first few years of teaching? Um, think about, I mean, I was very fortunate. I had a, I had a great um, PE kind of mentor at the time, a very experienced PE teacher, a lady there who, who kind of showed me the ropes and, and really, um, you know, I came out a young buck from university and, and felt I knew exactly how to do everything straight away. And, and she, and she really taught me, taught me quite a lot about, about teaching and, and different ways of, of teaching to a different kind of, a different audience of, of students. So there isn't just one way, there, there's plenty of ways to get your, to get your message across and, and, and allow those students to learn. So yeah, she was, she was very influential and it really taught me that there's more than one way to skin a cat really. Excellent. And in terms of your, your progression into uh, middle leadership, um, how did that pan out? Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, I went from uh, when I when I first got a, a, a job in my first school, I was actually in residential boarding uh, accommodation. I was a, kind of an assistant housemaster tutor type role anyway. Um, and from that, I, I kind of had a love of pastoral care anyway. And kind of the PE games thing, I think, traditionally sits quite, quite nicely with that. Yeah. Um, and I then went on to be a housemaster house uh, at, at two different schools. And so I always had my eye on that kind of deputy head pastoral type role. And I, I guess through the experiences gained over kind of 12 years of doing house mastering at two schools, I applied having, having my eye on always what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, so I got into, into senior, senior leadership as a deputy head pastoral. Fantastic. And uh, in terms of your, your path, because you're obviously quite, quite a new head teacher, how's that, how's that works for you? Um, it, 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 it's, it's good. Um, I mean, I, I had uh, about four years of, of senior leadership experience um, of a deputy pastoral in one school. I then moved to uh, uh, the school I'm currently at in, in Oxford as a senior deputy, but also kind of overlooking the, the pastoral care. And then, and then from there, the opportunity came around to be, to take on the, the principal role and, and I kind of stepped in to do it that way. So. I'd say it's not unusual in, in this day and age to have kind of a, a senior deputy step up to, to, be, to be a principal, but I didn't really go through that application process that is still the norm. Was that always in your, in your plan? Did you always plan to be a head teacher? Um, I always, yeah, probably. If the honest answer is probably at the back of my mind, that was something that I, that I thought I'd be reasonably good at. Um, but I'd always been taught from, from uh, an early point in my career that you, that you just focus on what you're doing and, and you don't look, look that far. You know, my aim has always been focus on short-term achievable goals and, and otherwise you're gonna miss what's directly in front of you and, and, and where well, you're busy looking at the horizon. So yeah, um, it's kind of happened. Uh, I, think, I think within the independent sector, it's important to have a some sort of plan, know your way through if that's where you want to go. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's kind of worked out quite, it's kind of worked out quite well. So um, I'm delighted to be here. 
And in terms of um, guidance and, and sort of mentor, who's been the, the biggest um, sort of influence and mentor within your, within your teaching? Um, it's a difficult one. I mean, I wouldn't really put one person's name down next to it because I've, I've kind of had teaching roles. I've had roles within, within the games programs at the school I've had, and I've had obviously senior leadership roles. Um, and there's been uh, probably key people within those different, the, the different spheres of work that have had a, had a great influence on me. The lady I mentioned about the head of, uh, the head of PE at my initial school, uh, I had a very, um, good deputy head partial when I turned to first being a housemaster, who was an experienced man and kind of guided me through that as a as a young housemaster. And when I moved to uh, my first deputy headship, I, 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 the head who appointed me appointed me again the second time, and and they were very influential as well. So yeah, kind of different people at, at, at key points really. Excellent, excellent. And um, what advice would you give to any NQTs or? Um, people that are thinking of, of turning, um, starting a teaching career? Um, NQTs, I, th I think, you know, there are, my, my main piece of advice would be there are a lot of great teachers out there. Um, and, and from my own experience, you know, coming out thinking I knew everything out of the university, um, that actually there are so many different ways to teach and really not let anybody um, tell you how, how to teach and how your personality should come across in a lesson. It's got to be you. Um, but to, you know, to go and observe great teachers in your school, I think, I, I think you know, observation is, is well known, but it's still such an undervalued commodity. You know, we, have, we have these great examples happening every day in our schools. And for young teachers to actually go and um, look at a variety of lessons, probably to totally not related to their own academic subject, I think is, is a brilliant way to see how different people are trying to access young minds in different ways. Sure. Okay. Uh, and in terms of uh, within school, um, what current initiatives do you have running? Uh, we have a we have a, a great new a, a great new program um, called Discovery Plus here, here at Dover Brooks, which um, it really kind of tries to expand uh, what we do in, in terms of branching out outside of the curriculum. Uh, it's delivered within our activity program. Students sign up to it. They're amazingly amazingly keen. It's new this year. Um, and it looks at current affairs, um, a variety of, of, of world events, things that are really happening today and, and are relevant, and, and actually things that they will probably be asked to interview. And it's, it's staggering that we've got, um, you know, we've got bright students, but you actually investigate real, genuine, current topics. And, and you're sometimes a little bit dumbstruck by the, the amount they don't know. And um, so, so they are going through this program, they do it in a six week block, and then eventually they, they, they come together and they present all their, their uh, findings, their information in, in a kind of a, um, almost, uh, it's, like a, it's like a game, it's like a, a game show where they are presenting their different findings on different subjects, and the panel will judge how, how much they've learned and what they're, and what they're doing. And yeah, we're, we're, we're really hopeful for it in terms of increasing the breadth of knowledge of our of our students in a world which is very exam focused uh, and very results driven actually our belief is that it's that broad understanding of the world and the bigger issues in in the world combined with their subject knowledge that is specific for their exams that will make them a genuine candidate for for the top universities sure and you, you touch on that but where, where do you foresee the the education um, sector moving towards in in the next sort of you know, three, five years, huge emphasis on, on like you say, uh, the, the more sort of rounded te technology and, and different angles of, of education. Where, where do you foresee it going? Um, and obviously there's been a lot written um, about, uh, about kind of online learning with, with, with various, I, I, won't, I won't name them, but various schools who are now launching kind of online platforms. Mm. Uh, I think that's a really interesting development that we'll see. I don't think um, it will ever... It, it will never really capture what it's like to go overseas and, and, and study in an English school, for instance. But I think it, it, it's, it's certainly got legs because of cost implications, things like that, for, for, for students around the world to have access to the, the British curriculum. Um, I think, you know, obviously the, one of the main challenges that, that we as educators have got at the minute is with the, the massive explosion in, in mental health and, um, you know, how, how we actually as schools deal with that and where and where our responsibilities 
lie with that because you know we have a firm understanding that happy students are successful students and 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 therefore it's it's all in all our interests to to have them happy and healthy and and working hard and, and achieving so i think that's going to become an increasing challenge you know how 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 upskilled do we need our, our staff to be in, in the modern age to deal with a multitude of issues that, that students bring through the door? Um, and it's obviously, it's a challenge and it's a challenge on, on staff time. Um, you know, do they teach 22 hours a week? Do they, do they now need to teach 18 hours a week because, because they're now dealing with X amount of, of issues? Is it right that they deal with those issues? It's, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting time. And I think one that only is gonna, is, is gonna develop and grow to a point where we really need to make some decisions about it. Certainly. A teacher's work is, is never really done, is it? Because <laughs> fact, the number of, number of hats that they end up wearing um, yeah. really is a, a phenomenally challenging um, position, given the, 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 not only sort of the diversity of what they're expected to do, but also then the diversity of the learner as well. Um, and it can, be, it can be incredibly sort of rewarding from seeing, you know, little Johnny short pants progress through and, and do really, really well. But also it must be incredibly humbling um, when they, they face sort of a little bit of adversity and have to help um, a student and a pupil through you know, a certain, you know, period of adversity and, and difficulty as well. So, um, and in terms of school, is there anything in particular that, that you're doing within school where mental health is concerned? Um, I think we're very, I think we're very fortunate. We're in a very fortunate position. Um, we, we, I mean, a lot of schools say they, they have um, a unique kind of relationship with their, with their students. I think, you know, Dover Brooks is, is, is one that, that is absolutely known for that. Um, we have, we, we work incredibly collaboratively with our students. We run a, a particular program called um, a director of studies program where, um, our, our director of studies and the teacher, and if you want to call it, I mean, I'll get shot for calling it at school, but if you want to call it a tutor, but it's more of a specialist tutor for a small, very small group of students. They don't have a tutor meetings at sixth form. Uh, they meet individually and they will deal with pretty much everything to do with that student's, student's life. And they, and they do develop very close relationships with those students. And I think, um, you know, the, 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 the Dover Brooks model um, is probably, in my in my opinion, why it's such an exciting place to be. It's probably ahead of the curve in terms of in terms of education. You know, I think um, society as a whole, children as a whole, students as a whole, um, they they don't really want to be educated like it's 1970 with X amount of military rules and, and whatnot. You know, there is a sense of uh, there's a, a, a different emphasis on on what they think is acceptable and what not. And, you know, we don't have a we don't have a, a uniform. So um, I don't know a, a girl walking into a um, a sit form physics lesson doesn't walk in in the first conversation the physics teacher is having and saying your skirt is too short, because actually you know we all know um, that that probably alienates that that girl for a period of time when actually the emphasis for us is on um, collaborative relationships and learning. Um, so, you know, I, I think, I think the whole, the whole Dover Brooks uh, ethos for me is, is the reason why we are, we've grown so rapidly and, and, and why we're so successful in what is a very competitive market in, in, in Oxford. Sure. And what about you in terms of um, progression and, and what are you looking to, to implement over the next, the next couple of years? Um, well, I mean, we are we are in a period of, of growth. We have been for the last uh, three years, let's say, um, and it's quite it's quite kind of rapid growth. I think we were at 520 students probably three years ago. We are 670 now, um, and we're going to continue to grow. So, with that, with obviously our, our our biggest challenge is the infrastructure that sits sits below that below that growth. Um, and, and making sure that we are still able to do exactly what we say on the team, which is treat all those students as, as individuals and yeah. know them. So it's really, I guess, the main, the main schooly challenge, if you want to call it, is, is supporting via infrastructure and being clever about how we do things, the growth and maintaining uh, the uniqueness of the school, even though it, it, it's grown substantially. And how would, you, um, how would you build a successful team, do you feel? Um, I, to be honest, uh, the, the, the most successful teams have the best players. 
and, um, and, and you can't get away from that. So it, it's, it's about analyzing the team that you've got. Um, but often we, we, we're dealt a, a set of cards and they're, and they're the cards we have to, we have to play with. Um, but it really is, it's the same as any, as any good games team really, you know, you've got to make those people within your team feel valued, that they have a, that they have a significant input and actually probably that they are one of the most valuable members of that team. Sure. Um, and you know, my, my style is very much to give them the scope to, to go and deliver what, what they, what they believe in. Um, we are a very collaborative SLT. Um, I think we get on well, I, I'm going to say that, but I think, but I think we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's about generating that sense of common purpose. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate I've come into a school where we do have some experience SLT and, and they have grown up on that journey of Doverbrooks and, and, and they love the school for what it is. So, you know, anything that they, they say uh, is really not out of personal benefit or gain that they might get out of it. It is out of a love of the school and wanting to, to kind of maintain and cherish the unique ethos that we have so um yeah it's it, it, it's about getting your, your your best players in place it's about giving those best players the opportunity to to actually do what they're good at um you know it's no point us as as heads employing people uh, and telling them what to do because you know we can we can employ anyone to do that you employ people who are better more capable than you so they make you look good and um and, and i think you know Fortunately, I've kind of walked into a situation where we've got a great leadership team here. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty good. Excellent. And what about outside of, of work? Um, what, what sort of do you do to um, sort of get away from, get away from work? Um, I like a game of golf when, when, when the weather's better and, I, and, I, and, I've, and I've got time. And I'm, I'm also a big, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Welsh rugby fan. So, um, yeah, I can, be, I can also be a fan of sitting on the couch and, and, and watching a little bit too much a little bit too much rugby on the weekends. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me playing with, playing a bit of golf with my son and watching a bit of rugby, I think. Fantastic. And what's the latest book that you've read? Uh, ooh, I'm actually, I'm actually just onto the new Warren Gatlin autobiography. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's my, that's my latest kind of couple of day read. If I, if I, if I can say that, not very educational, but, but very good. Fantastic. And, um, and what's your favorite work app? Um, it, it's probably a, an app called Dew um that that helps you you plan and it kind of it it, it pops up on your on your phone and, and, and tells you various things that you should be doing it's like a it's like a pa in the pocket so um uh yeah it, it, it's needed because it's busy and and what about your your f favorite sort of personal app outside of work um oh, good good question i've got a couple on my phone probably the one i use most is again it's, it's going to be my rugby related it's probably the bbc sport app that i that I regularly check check things on when I haven't got time to actually sit down and watch it. Excellent. And if you weren't a teacher, um, what career path would you have chose? I mean, it would certainly be something to do with child student development. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on, on probably what that would have looked like. As I said, I always had my 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 kind of career uh, and what I wanted to do. Um, in front of me, I wasn't one of those people who who ever thought about other other options. Really, um, I did I did I did tinker with wanting to work in a golf shop at once uh, at one point, um, but that that never really materialised. But uh, yeah, I think it, I, I think it would be something to do with young people anyway. Excellent, excellent. And in terms of um, the, the within school, is are there any any initiatives that you want to share um, that people need to to know about? Um, no, not particularly. As, as I mentioned, you know, we're, we're, we're always looking to do, to do uh, new things, and, and, and the Discovery Plus that we're doing this year is our is our is our big thing, um, and we've got we've got a huge uptake of that. Um, you know, we've got a new enrichment program that's running again this year, which which hopefully uh, covers and and is is a forward thinking enrichment program, um, which covers a lot of the, the the things that probably the more traditional kind of you know the sex, drugs, uh, cigarette. You know, don't smoke. Education is is, is kind of gone, and, and, and we are we're covering more um, relevant, up to date things. Um, but yeah, really for us this year, it, it's about consolidation. It's about the, it's about the Discovery Plus program. It's about continuing to support 
the the mental health of, of the students in the school to get to get the best out of them. We've got you know a fabulous suite of counsellors who come in and, and, and work at work at the school alongside the staff, helping both staff and and students. Uh, we place place I like to think we place great emphasis on on the well being of, of of staff and and students. Um, and yeah, so you know our, our end game is always to to try and broaden the students' uh, academic opportunities. Um, you know, we do that by, we have 35 A-level options anyway, so they've got a pretty broad, pretty broad selection of, of subjects that they can study, but it really is to give them every opportunity. And, um, you know, one of the things I'm always proud about that, that we always come, come across when people come for, for interview is they say that, you know, we must be one of the only schools with, on our, on our principles, on our guiding principles, one of them is, is laughter. And, uh, and, and they always say, well, that's, that's so unique. And, and we're like, well, actually, you know, we, we genuinely engage with that idea that, that, that we need to have that collaborative, happy relationship with, with students. And so, you know, in, in terms of new things, Discovery Plus, but, but it's really more of the same for us at the moment. Okay, excellent. And what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Um, obviously via, uh, via the school um, um, and via my, my via my PA, uh, they can they can find me on Twitter um, at, at DBX Principal. Uh, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a massive tweeter, but I do occasionally dabble. Um, so yeah, they, they they would be the best the best point, point of call by Twitter and and, and and at the school. Excellent. Well, what I'll do um, I'll put the um, links to um, your Twitter and also to um, school and, and contact details um, in the role below and I'll probably pop up on the screen somewhere as well um, and thank you ever so much for your time it's been really informative yeah thanks Lee it's been absolutely great brilliant thank you cheers thanks a lot <laughs>